So hi everyone, please welcome to today's class. Today we shall be looking at the application of binomial distribution. Uh, recall that last week we looked at uh, the formula that is used for binomial distribution. And the formula we gave was the probability of getting exactly X number of successes. The probability of getting exactly X number of successes is given by N combination X, multiply that by P, Power x, multiply that by q, n minus x. And we said this is a constant. This is a number, okay? And this number is obtained in a very, in a very systematic way. So this number here, n, uh, choose x, is called the, you read it as n combination x. n combination x. Or you can say, uh, choose x. from n. So it tells us the number of ways, the number of ways of choosing, the number of ways of choosing uh, x successes, x successes from n trials. The number of ways of choosing uh, that number of successes when you have n trials, okay? So uh, le let me illustrate this using some small illustration. I hope you recall when you were doing the general binomial experiment, we saw that some of the coefficients were, were three somewhere, okay? You remember, uh, recall, in our previous class, we saw that if you take P plus Q, our three, we saw that this is the same as P cubed plus 3p squared q plus 3p q squared plus q cubed. So we saw there, there are these constants. These constants are the ones that are given by this, by this function here. And so here we can say we also have a constant one there. Constant one there. If you look keenly at this kind of expression here, uh, we, have, we, have a, we have these coefficients, these constants, and then we have P and Q everywhere. We have P and Q. I can write this statement as one P cubed uh, Q power zero plus three P squared Q power one plus three P power one Q power two plus one P power zero Q power three. So you can find that, you, you notice that there is a P and Q everywhere. And that's why in our formula there, in the general formula, some, uh, when you look at P plus Q power N, we saw that this is the same as summation. As you can see, we are adding up. We are summing up some terms. Huh? Then there was a constant here. Then there was a P power X, then Q N minus X. Okay, there was that. So that is what is giving us this kind of expression. There is the summation. Then there is this item here which gives us the coefficients in question then the rest is just p times q and p has power x and q has power n minus x uh, you will notice that and, and i think I, I, there was a slip of tongue in the previous video where i said that when you sum this i think i said when you sum this you get one no it's supposed to be when you sum this you get n when you sum this you get n when you sum that the powers you get n where n is the number of trials, is the number of trials, and then x is the number of successes, is the number of successes. So uh, when you look at this expression, when n is equal to three, we have some coefficients here, and I want us to pick on these. Huh? I want us to pick on this. This coefficient three here means that there are three ways of choosing how many successes? This is the number of successes. Two successes. Two successes in how many trials? This is the number of trials. Uh, this is the, the sum is the number of trials. The, the sum of the powers uh, is the number of trials in three trials. And I want us to illustrate with the with the with the example of tossing a coin three times and then recording the number of heads observed. Uh, consider that example of, uh, of uh, tossing a coin. 
three times and let uh, x be the number of heads that show up. <clears throat> so I want us to list all the possible outcomes. I want us to list all the possible outcomes when you toss a coin three times. So I want us to list all of them. Then from there, we shall, look, uh, we shall be looking for how many ways do we get two successes in the three trials? How many ways, in how many ways do we get two successes or two heads out of three trials? So you can unmute yourselves and help me to record these values. Or I can just quickly come up with a, with a tree diagram. I think that will, will make it my, my working a little bit accurate. So you can get head or tail, uh, head or tail, you can get head or tail, you can get head or tail, So the sample space is you can get you can get H H T you can get H T H you can get H T T you can get what is this you can get T H H you can get T H T you can get T T H and finally we can get T T T. So this is our sample space. Our sample space has these elements here. So and the question is, in how many ways? In how many ways uh, can we get two successes? That is heads, huh? And we had two successes in three trials. If you toss the coin three times. So you just need to come here and get uh, the number of successes. Huh? I think we did something like this uh, last week. So the number of successes, these are three successes, those are three heads. These are two successes, two successes, one success, two success, uh, two successes, one success, one success, and no success. So what you need to do is to, uh, to come to this column here and count the number of times you have two as the number of successes. So we have this one, this one, and this one. So the answer is three. So there are three ways of getting two successes when you toss a coin three times. And these three ways are you can have HHT or you can have uh, HTH or you can have THH. So those are the three ways, those are the three ways of choosing uh, 2H in three tosses. So basically, that is the explanation of the coefficient there we are calling the, the we are calling the combination, okay? So uh, you will also notice that uh, there's some other pattern. There's a pattern in which you can generate those coefficients, uh, especially when the number of trials are not very many, using something called the Pascal's triangle. But I don't want us to go there. I really don't, don't want us to go there. I also don't want us to use the formula. There's a formula that gives us, uh, maybe I can just mention it. Uh, uh, you can use a formula, which I very much discourage you from using, a uh, formula of n combination x, of x, which is equal to, you can get n, something you call factorial, which I've not introduced you to, uh, n minus x factorial multiplied by x factorial, where what you call factorial here, x, uh, let's say x factorial is this product. If you take x multiply by, multiply by x minus one, multiply by x minus two, all the way until you reach times one. That's what we call factorial. For instance, you can have something like a three factorial is the same as three times three minus one, which is two, times two minus one, which is one. You stop when you reach there. So the answer is six, okay? So when I talk about uh, three combination two, that is the number of ways of choosing two successes from three trials, the answer will be three factorial divided by three minus two factorial outside 
multiply that by the denominator factorial, which is the same as three factorial divided by one factorial multiplied by two factorial. And then we need to note that one factorial is the same as one and zero factorial is also equal to one. We need to note that. Huh? So uh, that means if I work using this formula here, this will be six divided by one times two factorial is uh, the same as two times one, which is two. So you'll get the answer is three. But you see, that's a very lengthy process. Huh? Uh, but that's in the background, that is what your calculator will be doing. So I'll prefer that in this class, we adopt the calculator. So when you open your calculator, so using your calculator, and we are referring to a scientific calculator in this case, huh? you will see this function. That is a combinations function. That is a combinations function. Maybe I forgot to say that even in your calculator, you can also get the factorial function. It's given by, uh, by these. Huh? So you don't have to do this manually. You don't have to do this manually. You can use your calculator to obtain it. Huh? There's a function which looks like that. X with something like an exclamation mark. That is read as X factorial. So you just need to press three, then you press that function. You'll get the answer is, is six. So when the numbers are large, avoid doing this. Huh? Uh, just press your calculator, okay? But even more conveniently, it's using the combinations key, huh? <clears throat> okay? So for instance, if you want to, to obtain uh, three combination two, you just need to press, you need to press three, then you press that key. You may have, you, you may need to shift. Huh? In most of the cases, you'll be required to shift so that you, you get this function. Then you press, then you press two. Then after that, you press equal sign. You should be able to get the answer, which we got here as S3. So basically in this class, we shall be using <coughs> the calculator to find different uh, kinds of uh, combinations. So I want you to try this. <clears throat> so I want you to try this. <coughs> uh, you can try 10 combination two. You just tell me the answer once you get it. Uh, then you can have uh, 100 combination 20. You can have 1000 combination uh, 50. <coughs> So use your calculators to find those values and you let me know what you have. In the first scenario, 10 combination two. Forty-five. Forty-five. Forty-five, correct. Anyone who is not getting forty-five? Very good. So let's move on. 100 combination 20. 5.36. Is that it? Yeah. Yes. To power 20. To power 20, yeah. So you need to multiply by 10 raised to power 20. Whatever you have, that is more value. 5.3. Five, nine, what, 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 times 10 raised to power 20. So it's a very large number. It's a very large number. It's a very large number. Uh, what about the last one? A, a thousand combination 50. Hmm? You notice that, but you notice that in the second example, the second example, uh, the number was very, very large. So in the third example, we expect the number to be even larger. So the number of digits that can be, that, that will be the result to that question, number one, there are too many to fit in your calculator. Number one, your, your calculator cannot memorize all those digits. That's why you are getting a math error as a, your calculator is returning a math error because your calculator is not able to compute that value. That tells you that for binomial distributions, when n is very large, when n is very large, you are likely to run into such problems. So at some point, we'll be trying to estimate the binomial distribution using uh, another distribution, 
like the normal distribution to avoid problems like that one. These are the ones we're calling our computational problems. So basically, uh, that is a combination function and that's how we shall be using. In this class, we'll try to make our n relatively small so that you are, you are able to compute it using your, your calculator, okay? Uh, any question? So if there's no question, I want us to look at now the application part. I want us to look at specific examples and solve them using the formula that we've mentioned there. Uh, so let's have example one. These examples are in your notes. Example one and example one says that uh, the probability that that a matchstick, the probability that a matchstick will break on being struck, the probability that a matchstick will break on being struck is 0 0.4. Sorry, uh, 0 0.04 is 0 0.04, okay? Then uh, what is the probability? What is the probability that out of a matchbox, a, ma a matchbox of uh, 50 sticks, out of a matchbox of 50 sticks that uh, Roman one, that none will break. The probability that none will break. Okay. Then two, we can say, uh, uh, let's say uh, exactly two will break. Exactly two will break. Then Roman three, we can say at most two will break. Then number four, I can say at least break. So let's try to answer that question. Uh, we have a matchbox here containing 50 sticks and we are told that the probability of a matchstick breaking on being struck is uh, is 4%. We need to answer the following questions. Okay? So if we assume a binomial distribution, so solution, if we assume a binomial distribution, <coughs> we can let x, <coughs> we can let x to be our variable of interest, the number of matchsticks matchsticks that will break that will break on being struck okay so we know that number ages from what the smallest number of matchsticks that can break out of 50 is 0 1 2 all the way to 50 it is the highest number of matchsticks that can break. Okay, so uh, now we can say that x, uh, assuming that x is a binomial distribution, so assuming that that x satisfies the conditions. Remember the four conditions of the binomial distribution. The binomial distribution. It means that we can say that uh, we can say that these are we denoted mathematically. We say that x uh, has a norm as a binomial distribution. So this symbol here means x is following a binomial distribution. Huh? Uh, x as a binomial distribution with two parameters. There are two things that we need to mention about the binomial distribution for the distribution to be fully defined. So for the binomial distribution N and P, we need to mention N and P. So what is N in this case? What is N in this scenario? What is the sample 50. size? Yes, the sample size is 50. What about P? What is the probability of success? Hmm. 
zero point zero four. So this is fifty, then zero point zero four. So when you write like that, somebody will understand that you are saying x has a bin. So this is read as these are your read data. Uh, x has a binomial distribution. with n is equal to 50 and p is equal to 0 0.04. So when you write like that, that's what somebody will understand. X has a binomial distribution with n is equal to 50 and p, the probability of success, equal 0 0.04. So once you have that definition, you can now answer any question. So let's answer question one. We are looking for probability that none will break so we're looking for probability that x is exactly equal to? Zero. Equal to zero, yes. And that will be given by, uh, remember the formula is n, let me write the general one first, like that. Then we have p power x, q power n minus x. Of course, we have said that n is 50 and p is 0 0.04. So those are the guys I'm going to plug in here. So. And now our small letter x here is zero. X is zero. So this will be 50. You choose zero. Multiply by zero. zero. So once you know p, you know q is one minus p. Yeah? Yeah. So this will be power zero times, what is the value of q? 0 0.06. 0 0.06. 0 0 0.96, is it so? 96. 0.96. And what is the power of this value now? The power of Q is N minus Q, sorry, N minus X. And our N is 50, and our X is zero. Zero. This would be the power 50. In such a way that when you add the powers, you must always get N. When you add those two powers, you must always get N. So let's simplify this. Using your calculator, you can obtain the first, uh, the combination, 50 combination zero. What is the value when you take 50 combination zero? One. 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 We also know that anything raised to power zero is one. So actually the answer is just 0 0.96 power 50, which is equal to, 0 0.23. 0 0.13. I prefer you keep four decimals huh? because sometimes you want to report this one as a percentage. Yeah? So, or you can say 12.99%. There is a 12.99%, or now you can round off to 13% chance that you will get uh, zero breakages. Huh? that none of the matchsticks will break, okay? So now let's answer Roman two, the probability that exactly two will break. So that means X is exactly equal to two. The word exactly here means equal sign. Huh? So this will be equal to from 50, you choose two successes, multiply by 0 0.04 power two, multiply by 0 0.96, power 50 minus 2, 48. What is 50 combination 2? 50 combination 2, you get how much? 25. 12 and 5. Huh? Multiply by the rest, huh? 0 0.04. I prefer you just, uh, uh, just press the entire thing uh, using your calculator. You get the answer is? Zero point twenty seven sixty two. I know. Yeah. 
Sorry. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Huh? So when two point two seven six two is correct, isn't it? Yes. Yes. That's that's the correct one. All right. Then uh, let's go to Roman three. Probability that X is X is what? At, at most two. What does that mean? At most two. Which in equality? The maximum. Are you going to use? The max yes. So, is it more than two? Is it less than or greater than? Is it less than? Is the maximum? Less than. Less than maximum that you can break. So less than or equal to. So at most two means two or less. So this yes. means that x is taking which values? When you say x is less or equal to two, it means that x is taking which values? Zero. It's the same as probability that x is equal to zero, or probability that x is equal to one, or probability that x is equal to two. That's what we mean. So once you simplify it like that, you just need to compute the individual probability. So you may want to start from uh, probability that x is equal to zero, which is, we already have that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We also have probability that x is equal to two, which is 2762. So we don't need to collect, uh, to calculate this. Huh? So probability that x is equal to one will be from 50, you choose one, times 0 0.04 for one, times 0.96 for 49. For someone to give us the final answer. Zero point two seven two seven zero six zero six yes. So when you talk about probability that x uh, that x is less or equal to two is the same as probably that x is equal to zero plus. So we combine them with a plus. Huh? X is equal to one plus probably that x is equal to 2. So we add these three values. Huh? We get 0 0.1299 plus 0 0.2706 plus 0 0.2762. So that is the probability that we'll have at most three breaking. Get zero point. Zero point. Seven, six, seven. Six, seven. Six, seven. Okay. So that's Roman three. Uh, Roman four is uh, at least two will break. At least two will break. So Roman four, we need probability that X is what now? Two. two or more. Two or more. Two and above. Is greater or equal to two. Okay. So which values are we talking about there? We talk about two or more. Two. Two, two three, four, all the way to? Two, fifty. Fifty. All the way to fifty. Okay. 50. We may not want to yeah. follow that route. Eh? So we use the complement rule of probability. to so say this is the same as one minus probability that x is strictly less than two. So make sure that these two are mutually exclusive. Huh? So it's the same as one minus probability that x is strictly less than two. So this is the same as taking one minus probability that x is equal to zero plus probability that x is equal to one. That's what we call 
when x is less than 2 means x is 1 or 0. So this will be equal to 1 minus. We have those probabilities already. When x is 0, we have uh, we have 0 0.1299 plus when x is equal to 1, we have uh, 0 0.27 six. Which gives us how much? 0 0.599. 59. Five yeah, so that's the probability of getting uh, more than two, uh, at least two, two breakages. So that's how you compute it. Huh? All right, so that's the end of that example. Walima well, didn't understand that part four. Huh? Yes. Uh, which bit? Why did you have to? Uh, have one minus probability of. Uh, 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 I did that to for convenience, huh? because uh, look at this. Assume these are the possible values of x. Possible values of x are starting from zero, all the way to. Fifty. Fifty. Okay, so I had the option of calculating the probabilities for, and I know that if I sum the probability of all x, I'll get what? If I sum probability of x is equal to 0, probability of x is equal to 1, all the way to probability of x is equal to 50. When I do all those summations, uh, I'll get what? 1. one. one. I'll get 1, OK? So, so the probability from here up to there is 1, if I were to map it there on the number line. So the question was asking me to get these probability values, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 50. I, want, I was to do that. Somebody can do that if they have time and space, OK? So but I know if I take this probability, whatever the number is, that probability plus whatever is remaining here, I must get 1, OK? So that's why I'm saying I can take, you see, I'm saying probability that x is is greater or equal to, to 2 is some, let, let me call it p star, like that. But I know that if I take probability that x is less than 2 plus p star, I must get 1. Can you see that? The remaining probability plus the above probability here, I should get 1, isn't it? So if I'm looking for this guy here, p star here, is the same as 1 minus probability that x is less than 2. Less than two is the, the blue part, huh? the blue part like that. So that's called the complement law of probability. So you can always reverse like that to make your computations quick and fast. Like you see, we've just done just one step. And you find that we all, we have the information, even we had the information in advance. So that's a complement rule. Okay, I, I guess that will be is clear or maybe will be clear later. Yes, it is. All right, so can we look at uh, another example? So example two, uh, this is the example. It has been found, so this is example two, that it has been observed, it has been observed that, that on average, on average, 5% of the eggs, 5% of the eggs supplied to a supermarket, supplied to a supermarket are cracked, are cracked. Full stop. Let me say, if you buy a box of, if you buy a box of six eggs, uh, if you buy a box of six eggs, what is the probability? What is the probability that it contains? What is the probability that it contains? Uh, so let's have some questions here. Uh, Roman one. Uh, we can start with this question. 
that it contains uh, two or more cracked eggs. Number two. Craft eggs. So number three contains all cracked eggs. Number four, we can also add this. It contains no cracked eggs. Okay. So let's answer those questions. So you have a tray here containing six eggs and we are told the probability that um, an egg will be cracked is 5%, is 0 0.05. So uh, let's start by defining our variable of interest. So let x be the number of cracked eggs. Box. Okay. So if we assume that the conditions of binomial distribution have been met, if we assume that the four conditions of the binomial distribution have been met, we can say that X has a binomial distribution. X has a binomial distribution with uh, how many trials? What is R and P in this context? Yeah. yeah. Speak up a bit. Huh? I think the, your volume is so low. N is six. N is six. Yeah, correct. N is six <clears throat> because the box contains six eggs. And then what is P? 0 0.05. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So we can say that X is binomial with a uh, n is equal to 6, and then p is 0 0.05. So that's what we have. So once you have n and p fully defined, you are, you are able to answer all the other questions. So question number one is the probability that we have two or more cracked eggs. So probability that the number of cracked eggs is two or more. Two or more means it is two, three, four, five, all the way to to six. to six. It means that it is two, three, four, five, six. I think that's not very far. If you have time and space, maybe you can compute all that. Huh? But we prefer to use the 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 longer the longer uh, sorry the shorter route. Huh? We reverse this and get the complement rule. So one minus probability that x is strictly less than two. And I hope you are noticing that I'm here using a strict sign when here there is an equal sign. If the question was uh, more than two eggs. If the question was looking like that, then when I come here, I would put an equal sign like that. So that I make sure that two is not counted twice and it's also not omitted. Because if I have it like this, then here I put like that, it means that two will not be part of the sample space. So I'll have left part of the sample space, which will give, uh, give me wrong answers, okay? So you have to make sure that uh, that value at the border point is counted and is only counted twice, I mean once. So greater or equal to two, so this is like that. So this is the same as one minus probability that when X is less than two means that X is one or two. Uh, sorry, one, one or zero, X is equal to zero plus mm -hmm. X is one. Like that. So one minus that sum. So let's compute each of these individual probabilities. So probability that X is equal to zero will be from six, you choose no breakages, okay? Then you multiply this by P, which is 0 0.05 power zero times 0 0.95 power six minus zero. So this will go away because those combinations and that, uh, that value will give you uh, one. So we have 0 0.95 raised to power six. It gives us a uh, it gives zero. a point. Zero point seven three five one five zero five one. Okay. 
then probability that x is 1 will be from 6 you choose 1 success times 0 0.05 power 1 times 0 0.95 power 5. We'll get 0. Point. Two three, two, three, two, one. Two, one. two, three, two, one. Correct. So now the required probability, probability that x is bigger or equal to two, probability that x is greater or equal to two, will be given by one minus zero point seven three five one, like that. Eh? Zero point zero three two eight. You have that. So that's the probability of getting two or more correct eggs. Huh? Around three percent. Around three percent. Then uh, let's look at Roman two. Roman two says uh, not more than two cracked eggs. That means two or less, huh? Yes. So probability of having like that. So this is the same as probability that x is equal to zero plus probability yes. that x is equal to x one. X is equal to one. And x is equal to two. There are three components. Already we have values for probability that x is equal to 0 and 1. So we just need to compute probability that x is equal to 2. But we have it now. So this would be from 6, you choose 2, times 0 0.05 power 2, times 0 0.95 power 4. Zero. Mm. Zero point zero three zero five. Zero three zero five. Correct. Thank you. So then we also know that probability of uh, x is equal to 1 is uh, 0 0.2321. And probability that x is equal to 0 is 0 0.7351. We need the total. We need the total. Mm. Point nine nine seven seven. So we have zero point seven seven. Correct. It's a very high chance. It's a very high chance we'll get less than. I mean, not more. Not more than two correct heads. Not more than two correct eggs. Huh? Then now uh, we can try Roman uh, three. Roman three says uh, that all all cracked. So we talk about probability that the number of cracked eggs will be will be equal to six. Sorry, will be equal to six. That is a 
that is 6 you choose 6 times 0 0.5 sorry 0 0.05 0 0.05 and 0 0.9640. Why nine? Yes? Nine point zero nine five. Zero point nine five. What did you get? Is it more than 0.96 or multiplied by 0.95? I want to know what you are getting. Yeah? Apple called multipl multiplication. Zero, five, yeah? zero. But doesn't yes. this will go? To, this will go to one, and this will go to. What is six? Choose six. You know how many ways can you choose six uh, uh, items from six? There's only one way. Yeah? So one. this is one. Yeah? So you are left with 0 0.05 raised to power 6. 0 0.05 raised to power 6. What will you get? 1.565 raised to power 0.8. Yeah. Uh, suppose you don't want to write it in standard form. You will say 0. Point. You'll have two zeros. Then you have 156. 156. Huh? Even you can put 25. So this is what, uh, from your calculator, you are seeing as 1.5625 times 10 raised to power minus 8. So this is 8, Zero huh? eight. Oh, the, Zero eight. the decimals are so many, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. If I were to include all the decimals, this is power 8. I thought this was power 3, yeah? So this would be 0. Point, how many decimals, huh? How many zeros? 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, five, six 7, seven. then 15. 625. So that answer looks like that. The correct answer is very small. There's a very small chance. Huh? There's a very small chance that all the eggs are cracked. It is very unlikely that all the eggs are cracked in short. Huh? Okay. Then uh, what is the probability that uh, that you have no cracked eggs? That's number four. Probability that the number of cracked x is zero. I think we already have the answer. Mm. Which is uh, 0 0.735. 0 0.735. 0 0.735. Right. So we already have that from up there. Uh, Paul, Paul Gatihori, yeah? you have a question? <coughs> Yeah, uh, I think I've lost you several times. Yes. Is it possible for you to share your whiteboard uh, later? Am I not sharing the whiteboard? You are sharing. Yeah. But I would like I would... to look at them later. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, let's move to any question there uh, as far as that example is concerned. Yes. Today you are too fast. Oh, I'm too fast, huh? Yes. Uh, let me slow down. So let me slow down in the next example. Ian Mwangi, you have a question? I have a question. Uh, 0 0.95 is raised to power. Uh, which one? Which part? Uh, Roman? Number three. Roman number three. Oh, the last guy here. Six. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's raised to power six. Wait. Yes. Point nine okay. five raised to power zero. Raised to power zero. Yes. This is what is raised to power six. Huh? Point zero five is raised to power six. This is raised to power six minus uh, six minus uh, the number of successes, which is six. Yeah. Power zero is not a six. That's why we were saying that this part will just go to, this will go to one, this will go to one, and you're only left with this part only to raise. Yeah? Because this is one and this is one. Okay, if you cancel. Huh? Are you there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's have another example. I will try to be slow in this example and in the next example. Uh, so example three.
example three. So let's uh, write it down. When you write it down, you, you also tend to memorize it. That's why I'm having you write it down. So we say that uh, a retail, a retail sales manager, a retail sales manager. I, I think you are sorted. Huh? So a retail sales manager will accept will accept uh, the delivery of a large consignment a large consignment of goods if a random sample if a random sample of 10 items, if a random sample of 10 items uh, contains no defectives, contains no defectives. Huh? So if there are no defectives in the sample that is uh, chosen, uh, this person will accept the entire consignment of many goods huh? or, or a large consignment, okay? And we say, uh, if if three percent, if three percent of the producer's total output of the producer's total output is defective. We know that 3% of the producer's output is uh, defective, comma, what is the probability, what is the probability that the delivery will be accepted? The delivery of the consignment will be accepted. What is that probability? And then we have an additional question. How would the situation change? How would the situation change? If, uh, if, if the random sample, if the random sample were of only five items. So suppose we don't choose 10. Suppose we don't choose a sample of 10. Suppose we choose a sample of five. Uh, what will happen? How would that decision change? How would that decision change? Okay, so let's look at that question. So we may want to start by identifying the variable of interest. So solution. Let, uh, let X be the number of defective. Huh? Items in the sample. Okay. So if we assume that all the conditions of binomial distribution have been satisfied, we can say that X has a binomial distribution. X has a binomial distribution. And once you do that, you need to mention your N and your P. But let's, we're answering the first question first. Huh? So what is N in the first scenario? 10. 10. We're working with a sample of size 10. And the probability of obtaining a defective, defective commodity is three percent. So with that, now our binomial distribution is fully defined. So let's try to answer the question. We are the question is what is the probability that the delivery of the consignment will be accepted? And when can it be accepted? When there is zero defective. Yeah, when there's not, not we need to 
find the probability that there is no defective. We need to find the probability that there is no defective. So out of 10, then we say 10 combination 0 times 0. 0. 0.3 or 0 times 0. 0.97 power 10. What is the value of that probability? So what is the probability that he'll, ac he'll accept this uh, consignment or given consignment? 0 0.7374. 0 7, so there's that probability of accepting a consignment. The probability that there are no defectives in any given consignment is that much. Okay. So we also want to compare. Suppose we pick a smaller sample. Well, sometimes you are tempted to pick a smaller sample. So we need to find uh, if, so this part one, this is part one. Part two is if we now let X to be binomial with uh, N is equal to five, the probability of success does not change. We need to find the same probability that X is equal to zero in this case will be five combination zero times 0 0.03 or zero uh, times 0 0.97 or five. 0 0.8587. Yes, we see that uh, the probability of getting uh, no defect is, is, is higher when the sample is smaller. So the probability of getting uh, no defect is, is higher when the sample is smaller. Well, this is also the probability of accepting. Eh? Even here. Oh. Accepting. So you can see we are more likely to accept the consignment when you pick a smaller sample. That might also mean that the risk is also higher of uh, picking uh, a consignment which has defectives. We are always encouraged to pick a larger sample, not a smaller one. So that way we'll make sure that uh, if there are any defectives, chances of tracing them is higher when you have a larger sample than when you pick very few items. All right, so I want us to look at uh, the last example. And uh, I want you to do it yourself. Can you share with the answers with me? Yeah, so the last part of this, uh, of today's lesson will be on the mean and the standard deviation of the binomial distribution. And we say that for any binomial distribution, for any binomial distribution, for any binomial distribution, uh, comma, the mean, the mean is denoted by mu, and the standard deviation, and the standard deviation, denoted by sigma, are given by the following formula. Are given by the following formula. So we say that mean is equal to n times p, and then uh, standard deviation is given by n p q square root like that. And you need to note that sigma squared which is NPQ is what we call the variance. The variance. Because we also know that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. For example, if, if we are given a variable X, which is binomial, uh, where the number of trials is three, and P is uh, one over six, and P is one over six. 
then the mean of that variable will be given by n times p which is 3 times 1 over 6 which is half okay then uh, the standard deviation the standard deviation will be given by the square root of n times p times q which is 5 over 6 if you take that huh? so this is a uh, 15 over square root of 15 out of that 6 if you simplify it you should get around 0 0.645 uh? something like that so you can also try the above examples you can try finding the mean uh, let's say this uh, try for the above examples try this try uh, the examples that we've discussed uh, uh, previously or above there try to find the mean and the standard deviation in in each case and uh, that marks the end of uh,